Now you may be walking past, you may be walking on by, but I urge you, do stand here and listen. Just give me five minutes, because I promise you that this is the most important news you could ever hear. Now, if I said to you, um, up the hill, just up there, up round the corner behind the wall, in a suitcase, is a million pounds. Now, you might be thinking, I can tell by the look of you already, you do not have a million pounds to throw away. You would be correct, I can tell you. But if I said to you that there was a million pounds up there, and if you go up there and go look around the wall and take that suitcase, that million pounds is yours. Now, although you might doubt it, although you might think this guy can't be right, I am almost certain everybody would go up there, look behind the wall, just in case it was true. Because it's not worth missing out on, is it? And I promise you guys, even more important than that, even more better than a million pounds, is the news I've got for you today. Because I believe that the good news of Jesus Christ, of the Bible, that it says that Jesus, who died on the cross to take the punishment for me and for you, to take what we deserve, so that we can be right with God and go to heaven, I believe that that is true. And I believe that every single person here, everybody walking by, I believe that you need to put your trust in Jesus. I'm not saying this because I want to judge you. I'm not saying this because I want to condemn you. I'm saying this because I want you to believe it and to have eternal life. If I found the cure for cancer, I would not keep it to myself. I would go around and tell everybody because I don't want people to have cancer. Cancer is a horrible thing. I believe this is even stronger than that. I believe I've got the good news. I have eternal life. I want you guys to have it too. Now many people, they say this, they say, you know, Christianity, I just don't believe it. Maybe what you're saying sounds good. You know, heaven sure sounds good, life after death, brilliant. But surely it's not true. How can you know it's true? Well, tonight, with the next five minutes of your time, I just urge you to listen to this one question. If you are a skeptic out there, if you are an atheist out there, and you say, I do not believe, I will never believe, then I have one question look to look at, and that is this, because it is this body, this question, where is the body of Jesus? Can I tell you, it is a fact in history that there was a man named Jesus who lived and walked this earth just over 2,000 years ago. No credited historian would ever, ever argue that. No. It is a fact in history that that man Jesus, who claimed to be the Son of God, who claimed to be God, was crucified on a Roman cross and died. No one would ever argue with that. There are many historians who aren't Christians, but no one would argue. And let me tell you this, it is a fact in history that that man Jesus, who died, three days later, the tomb where his body was stored was empty. His body went missing. Now, if you want to disprove Christianity to me, if you want to tell me what I am saying is a load of nonsense, then all we have to do is get to the bottom of the question, where is the body? If you can tell me where the body is, then it is a waste of my time being stood here. I wouldn't be standing here if I thought that the body was just in a grave dead. I wouldn't be standing here if I thought, no, it's not true, really. It could have happened another way. But you see, I looked myself, I looked at the evidence, I looked at what are the different options, what are the different possibilities, and I came to the conclusion that actually Jesus must have risen from the dead. He said he would, he said he was God, but did he follow through? Well, let's look at some of the options. You see, some people, they say, well, this man Jesus, they say he never really died. It's called the swooning theory. They say, actually, I know he hung on the cross, but perhaps he kind of revived himself and, and maybe got a breath of life, I don't know how. He wasn't really, he kind of fainted and in the tomb. He managed to get back to life um, and get the, you know, the strength to walk out. Can I just tell you, that is ridiculous, really. Who here would really think that a man who has been crucified on the Roman cross by Romans who were experts in execution they didn't make mistakes. A man whose hands and, and uh, his hands and feet were pierced with nails, who hung on the cross, lifting his body up for every breath of air, who would believe that actually that man didn't really die? They stabbed a spear into his side, and it's recorded that blood and water came out. It was separate. That is a sign that he was dead. 
So really, none of us here can really argue that he was really didn't die. And even if he didn't die, let's just suppose he didn't, who could then say that this man would have the strength to roll away a huge stone which was covering the tomb, fight off Roman guards, um, and escape? It's ridiculous to think that. So we can already dismiss that. So then we look at some of the other theories. Let's look at this one. Maybe some people stole the body. Some people say, well, perhaps the Romans stole the body. Perhaps the Jewish leaders stole the body. They knew that people, that Jesus, that Jesus had said he would rise from the dead. They knew his followers believed that he, well, they thought his followers believed. It's funny, his followers didn't actually believe he would rise from the dead. They were surprised on that morning when he did. But they thought, we don't want this religion to spread. So perhaps you might think, maybe they took the body somewhere else so that no one else could steal it. Well, you might think that, but can I ask you, why would they do that? Because they have no reason to. They guarded the tomb. They have guards outside. Who is going to be able to steal that body? Now, even if they did feel the urge to move that body somewhere else, in the weeks and months to go by, where there were Christians who were saying that Jesus lived, where there were Christians who were, who, who were preaching the name of Jesus, and many people didn't like it, the Jews and the Romans, both didn't like it, they didn't want it to spread. Now why on earth would they not just produce the body? If they moved the body, they could just say, he's not risen really, he's not alive really. Look, he's dead, he's here, we've got him. But you see, they couldn't. If they really wanted to disprove Christianity, they could have if they had the body. But they didn't have the body, so they couldn't disprove it. So we can, we can rule out that actually, that the Romans or the Jewish leaders stole it. Now, perhaps you might say, perhaps some grave robbers came. Now, grave robbers was a thing back then. There were many people who would go and rob the graves. And it wasn't the bodies that they were actually after. It was actually the cloths around and the garments around that wrapped in, was wrapped in the body. They were after them to steal them and to sell them. You see, they were quite valuable. Now, let me tell you something remarkable about Sunday morning when Mary went to the tomb to see it was empty. You see, it wasn't completely empty. There where Jesus' body was laid was the cloth that he was buried in, perfectly folded in place. Now, if there were grave robbers there, why wouldn't they take them? It makes no sense. If there were grave robbers there, they could have produced the body later on. So it doesn't make much sense either. Maybe you say, maybe you say, well, perhaps the disciples stole the body. Perhaps they wanted to invent this religion, invent this fairy tale to get people to follow them. Perhaps you know there's people in the world that like that. Um, you see leaders of cults. Who was it? Was it Jonestown or something? Something like that. I can't remember the name of the guy who had this big cult to follow him and he slaughtered them all. Perhaps people nowadays, maybe they would go to extreme lengths to create a lie and get people to follow them. But let me ask you this. One, not only could these disciples, why would they fight off the guards, risk taking the body out? And let me tell you something about these disciples, by the way. When Jesus' body was on the cross, when he died, these disciples were terrified. They were locking themselves away in rooms. They didn't want to, to see anybody. Why would they go and steal the body? Now, even if they did steal the body, if they have then taken the body and they've got it, and they're telling everyone that Jesus has lived, but they know really that it's not true, why on earth would they go on to live their lives telling people, just like I am now, telling people that Jesus lives and that you need to listen to the words of Jesus? Why would they? It'd be bizarre. You see, no one does crazy stuff like that for a lie. Maybe you say, well, they're deluded. Maybe, maybe they get a high off things like this. I can tell you I don't, but maybe they do. Let me ask you this. Why would they be willing to go to jail to say that Jesus lives? Why even further than that, why would they be willing to be beaten just to say that Jesus lives? Why would they be willing to go to even the point of death because they were willing to say that Jesus lives? They were willing to die, many of these. You see, who is willing to die for a lie? You might say, oh well, look at these ISIS bombers. 
you might say, these guys are deluded, they're brainwashed, and I'm sure they believe what they're doing is right. So they're, but they're dying for a life because we all know it's wrong and it is horrible, the stuff that goes on. So maybe they were like that, but I can tell you it's different because these guys would have known themselves that he was alive. Would you, just put yourselves in their shoes, would you really have been willing to die for something you knew was alive? Now when we think about it logically, we're only using our brain here. I'm not trying to convert you with all this religious jargon. I'm trying to show you some logic. I'm trying to show you some common sense. Nobody really would be willing to die for a lie. So we can't really say the disciples stole the body because they would have known Jesus was dead. So when we look at all the different options, we come to one conclusion. Where is the body? Who has the body? Well, actually, I believe with my whole heart. I believe with everything. I, it's not just a, a believing and a hoping. I believe that it is fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead three days later. I've looked at all the different options and I've said, it's ridiculous. He, he did definitely die. The Romans wouldn't have taken him because they would have just shown the dead body. The Jews wouldn't have taken him. They would have just shown the dead body. They would have loved and loved and loved to knock those Christians down and to say you're wrong very early on. They would have loved it. The disciples didn't steal the body because who is willing to die for a lie? And we've got to ask ourselves now, ladies and gentlemen, ask yourself this, well, where else could the body be? You see, what are the other options? I can't think of many other options of where this body might be. Now, so if I come to the conclusion, well, actually, let's say that what Jesus said is true. When Jesus predicted he would rise from the dead, three days later, when Jesus said that he is the Son of God, that he is God, perhaps that is true. And perhaps it is true that Jesus really did rise from the dead. Perhaps it's true he lived. Now, I believe this as fact. I have no doubt in my mind that Jesus lives. If I had an inch of doubt in my mind, I would not be stood here right now. But it is because I know this that actually I know something very important. You see, if we've come to the conclusion that Jesus it is a fact he died, a fact he was buried, and if we've come to the conclusion that it is a fact that this man Jesus was risen from the dead three days later, then we need to start thinking about the words he's saying. You see, if he predicted his death and his resurrection three days later, and it did come true, that actually, we need to think, well, the other stuff he said, maybe I should listen to that. And you see, Jesus said, we are all, if we are without Jesus in our life, if we haven't put our trust in God, he says we are all heading for a lost eternity. He is in a place called hell. And that is not a place where I wish any of you on the street here to go. It is not a place that even God wishes you to go. He says that he wishes none perish. He would want you all to live, but you have a responsibility here. You have a choice. I can't make your decision for you, nor can God. You have to make your own decision. And what are you going to choose to do, guys? Are you going to choose to look at the words of Jesus, and are you going to choose to believe them, or are you going to choose to push it to one side? You see, you can't sit on the fence with something like this. You can't. You can't say, well, maybe. You can't say, I'm not sure. If I have convinced you, and if it does convince you that Jesus lives, then we need to listen to his words. We need to. And so I'm going to urge you, if you are willing, would you come, take one of these, here in my hand, I have a gospel of Mark. This is an account of Jesus' life. In this book, it is just 16 chapters, but I believe these words contain life. Jesus said when he was alive, he said it even at the grave of his friend Lazarus, whom he raised moments later. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, if you here tonight are willing to put your trust in Jesus, are willing to believe what he says, if you believe in me, though you may die physically, you will never ever die. Though we, might, we all die physically on this earth, 
But that's not the end of it, I can tell you. I can tell you there's a life after that death. And where are you going? Are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? Now Jesus wants all of you to go to heaven. In here are the words of life. Now can I just finally close with asking you, I know it's quite a big thing to do, but I would ask you, if you've not considered this, if you're sitting on the fence, even if you disagree, come and take one of these books out of my hand. I know there's lots of people looking, but it's no embarrassment, because I can tell you this is more important than anything you'll ever make. It is a bigger decision than who you're going to marry. It is a bigger decision than what you will do for a living. It is a bigger decision than where you will live, than anything you will ever make. The decision of what you make with Jesus in your life is the biggest decision. And I ask you to come up and take one of these books from my hands. Thank you very much for listening, folks. I hope that I have caused you to think. I hope that I might have provoked a reaction, because that is what I'm here to do. I am not willing to let thousands and hundreds of people to walk past who I believe are heading to an eternity in hell. It doesn't sit right with me if I think that I have got the answer and it doesn't sit right with God. So please do take one of these out of my hands. Please do anybody just take one out of my hands. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear. The words of life here in my hands. Thank you very much for listening, folks. There you go. Thank you. I'm going to be around to chat, thank you. There's other people to chat to. If you've got questions still, please do. But thank you, that is all we've got for tonight, folks. Thank you.